and welcome back to Bearded Bastards Outdoors, your channel for bringing you everything about wilderness and outdoor survival. I'm Patrick, I'm a retired Green Beret, and I share with you all of the knowledge that I've gained over the years in the military and some of the things that I've picked up along the way doing this kind of stuff as a hobby. One thing that I really enjoy is I enjoy learning new things and I really love teaching. So all of this information I give to you for free and I hope that it, I hope you don't need it, but if you do, I hope it will come in handy. And plus it's just fun to go do stuff. So anyways, you caught me making some more char cloth. If you missed my previous episode on how to make char cloth and how it, and like why it works or whatever, go ahead and check that video out. I'll drop a link in the description or there's a link somewhere up here. Today though, um, I'm going to show you its effectiveness, why you wanna have char cloth as part of your fire kit. So on the previous episode where I talked about char cloth, you may remember, you may recall that I said that char is cotton material uh, where instead of burning it, we're smoldering it, we're charring it. The reason it's so good is because it can catch a spark like no other, right? It's an incredible resource for you to have and it comes in the mission preparation part of your planning. You see, when we talk about planning, and mission preparation and whatever I talk about, that you have to have a um, systematic approach to it, right? You have to go from head to toe. You have to look at what it is you're doing and think about your priorities of work. In this case, when we talk about outdoor wilderness survival, our priorities of work, we start off with fire. So when we pack, we wanna make sure that we have things that are going to help us with fire, uh, to make a fire because without fire, we wouldn't be able to cook food, purify water or clean water, uh, signal, uh, defend ourselves, uh, you know, field expedient, sterilization, things like that. So we wanna make sure that we have enough tools that will get us in, uh, to making a fire. Now, of course you can have a lighter. Okay, of course, and that would be the most simplest solution. And how many lighters are you gonna pack? As many as you want. That's fine. Pack a whole pack of Bic lighters, you're good to go, man. But we're just going to talk about char cloth and maybe something, it, you go watch the other video. It's so simple to make. You can make a hundred, hundreds of them in less than half a day. And it is just an excellent tool to keep in your toolbox. And, Today I'm going to show you why. And I like cotton balls personally for my char cloth. I get my stupid. There it is. I like cotton balls personally. Okay, they come out really nice, really soft, real fluffy, um, and they're fibrous, which makes them excellent for catching sparks. But also, I don't have to go rip up clothing. I don't have to look for 100% cotton jeans or whatever. I can go to Walgreens and buy a pack of 200 cotton balls for a couple bucks and spend half a day making 200 fire starters. Okay. So let's take a look at the equipment that we're going to discuss today. All right. So before you is what I'm going to demonstrate making my, uh, or I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a fire with the char material. Forgive my stand. I don't have any fancy equipment like most of these YouTube guys got, but we'll make do with what we have. So of course I have a container for my char material. I have a lighter and now what's special about this lighter is I ran out all of the gas, so it won't actually catch a flame. It'll just spark, and there's a reason for that, okay? I got a Zippo here. Now, I recommend Zippos because they're windproof, but again, there's no fluid in this. It's not going to light, and there's a purpose for that for today. I got a piece of flint, and I got a piece of steel, hardened steel, so you can catch, a, catch your spark and catch it on your char material. I have my Fresnel lens. This thing is sweet and today it's a great day to demonstrate it. All it is, it's a, the size of a credit card and it's a magnifying glass. These are fantastic. Love these things. You can get like 10 of them for a few bucks. A ferro rod, a bushcraft knife. But now what I have over here that I wanna share is I have some jute twine. Okay, and I have some grass rope both of which you can buy at Walmart for very cheap. And when it comes to packing for your excursion, we want to be as practical as possible. So when we think about our priorities of work, our number one priority of work being to make a fire, that again, that's my opinion. You might have a different opinion, I don't care. It's not the point of the video. We want to make sure that we have enough tools that are going to get us our fires very quickly. 
Um, but when we pack, we want to make sure that we have redundancy, which means that um, there's more than we have more than one way to skin a cat, but also that when we pack, we have things that have multi-use, multi-purpose. That way we save money and we can serve uh, space in our gear. Um, like, listen guys, you don't have to go spend a thousand dollars on some survival kit just because some YouTube nut or guru says you have to, okay? You can get, you can go spend 50 bucks at Walmart and get yourself a pretty decent survival kit. I like the, the grass rope or the jute twine is because it has multi-purpose. I can use it for, um, cordage i can use it for making tools making lashings making um help him to make apparatuses and shelters and things of that sort but also it's excellent fire making material all i have to do with the jute or the grass rope is to take them apart and separate them all into their individual fibers now this would be what i would qualify as a flash tinder because all i need to do if i have this and nothing else I have a ferro rod with me and I can catch this very quickly. Just like so, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to get a flame with jute, just a little bit of a spark. So realistically, what would I have with me if push came to shove? I would love to have some jute twine and a ferro rod because as you can see, it's very minimal effort to start a fire. But we're talking about char cloth, so let's move on. So to make these bird's nests with the jute, all I'm doing is I'm cutting off a strand, don't need a whole lot, and I'm just untwisting it. I get all of these beautiful strands and fibers pulling off. That's what makes it an excellent fire starter. Don't even need a whole lot of it, just a little bit. And again, you can go to Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michael's and buy several hundred feet of this for very, 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 very cheap. So I got myself a nice little bird's nest. I'm going to put some of this grass rope with it just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Now I got this nice little bird's nest. Okay. From here, I'm just gonna grab a piece of my char. Now, when it comes to the char, you don't need a whole lot of it, okay? I'm gonna separate it out so I can see all the, so I can get to the fibers. I'm gonna go ahead and catch a spark, spark with it. Right there. Drop it in. And then from here, I'm just letting that ember transfer heat into my bird's nest. I'm not getting in a hurry. I'm not gonna rush the process. I'm just letting it transfer. If I rush it and I blow on it, I can blow out my ember. So I'm just gonna be patient with it. You'll see the smoke start thickening up. Give it a little blow if, if you think it needs it. Gently though. There you go. Okay, so now that I have another bundle built, Let's talk about a lighter real quick so everyone's everyone mentioned everyone mentions a thousand times every time i make these videos like i'll just pack a lighter like i said great if you're gonna pack a lighter fantastic do it but right lighters run out over time or they get wet or whatever but we still have a spark so with that spark i'm just gonna simply put my piece of char on here and i catch a spark like that ow it's burning my finger <laughs> And as you can see, that piece of char catches that spark. 
we get our we can still use our lighter to make fire okay, I'm just gently nursing it I'm not rushing it letting all that heat transfer your hand. <laughs> and likewise, and likewise with the Zippo, as long as we can get that spark right there. Now, we're gonna take advantage of this beautiful day and I'm gonna show you this Fresnel lens. This Fresnel lens is my favorite just cause like I said, it's so small. It's the size of a credit card and it's just it's just super fun to play around with. So let's get out in the sun and let's let's go over it. Now the quick caveat to doing anything with solar uh, embers or solar uh, fires is that you can't have anything obstructing the sun. If it's got a little bit of cloud or a little bit of haze, it's not gonna work. You have to have clear un and unobstructed sunlight. So again, when we're talking about the Fresnel lens, we're talking about this. This thing is, this, again, this thing is the size of your debit card or your credit card, and all it is is a magnifying glass. This thing is fantastic, and again, you can get them on Amazon. You can get like 20 of these for like 10 bucks. So I'll drop a link in the description um, so you can check them out. And you know, make the investment. They're very inexpensive. Like I said, you put them in your pocket and forget about them. I've Well, there you have it, folks. There's uh, just scratching the surface of things that you can do with the char cloth. I hope that this was entertaining enough to, for you uh, or to you so that, you know, you just you go home and you just try it for yourself. Go home and make some char cloth. Again, I made a previous video. There's a link in the description. Um, make it for yourself and just go try this stuff. Have fun with it. Learn because the more that you learn, the more that you invest in yourself, the more you grow. And so... If I haven't said it already, I'm gonna say it now. If you found uh, this to be valuable, please go ahead and consider subscribing uh, and sharing with your friends. Um, we have a lot of fun here. I'm not in it for any sort of money or any what or whatever. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to have some fun with you and share some bit of knowledge with you. So, so another uh, thing that's important when it comes to solar embers and solar fires is that seconds prepare, count train, when the sun uh, is obstructed but then you get a clearing, you need something that's going to capture those rays fast. And that's where the Fresnel lens comes in with the char cloth. As soon as you see it start smoking, you have your ember.